Kia ora lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bryony and I do cruelty free and vegan makeup reviews and tutorials on this channel and deep dives into the environmental, social and ethical issues with the beauty industry. It's a big mouthful, I just cover a lot. Basically what we do here every Tuesday is we put on makeup and we have a deep dive into an issue that is revolving around the beauty industry and today we're talking about one that I've been very passionate about for a very long time. So we're actually going to be talking about living the lie, the lie that we are all leading with Photoshop, with filters, with Facetune, with literally everything that we're surrounded with. And it's the fight against that, whether there are any arguments for it, the history of photo editing and how we've gotten to where we are today, and the normalization of this warped view of perfection and the effects that that has on everyone mentally and what we can actually do about it. So really we're diving into a lot. This video is probably gonna turn out to be a long one. Please do subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers this year so then I can finally use that community tab. Until then you can talk with me on Instagram right here. I post there all the time about cruelty free and vegan beauty looks that I do, different products that I'm using, different things that you should be aware of and also in my stories I share a lot of really useful information. So come and connect with me on there because that also is part of like what informs videos like this. This was by far the most popular one that people wanted me to talk about out of the three topics that I did provide. So without any further ado, all of the sources are linked in the description below. All of the products I'm using on my face are cruelty free, vegan, not owned by parent companies that test on animals and they're also listed down below as well. And let's just jump straight into this topic which is not a new topic. This one has been covered by people like Stephanie Lange all the time, like there are so many people that are just saying like what you're seeing online is a lie. So this is not necessarily just pointing out the fact that there's Photoshop out there or editing out there because that is definitely something that we're all very well aware of. What I want to dive into is the ramifications of that. I'm gonna try for something emulating this. So first let's talk about the history of photo fixing. So in the Victorian era, this was actually something that was so widely done and Carolina has actually got a really really good video on it so I'll just link that down below as well. So they used to use paint and also they used what is it like pencils and they they would like cut pictures out and then place them on top they did a lot of work there and there's also a whole bunch of work that they would do mostly in the dark room by like splicing a whole bunch of like different pictures together like there's a lot of really famous photos that have all been spliced together Oh my gosh, I always forget just how pigmented this is, wow. And then even leading up to the Hollywood Golden Age, um, photo retouching was heavily done. Like if you look at pictures of people in the past, you're like, oh my gosh, people used to be so beautiful, like how nice and smooth their skin was. Most of it's actually been retouched. Don't feel too bad about it. I know, kind of feels like been sold a lie. And they'd do the whole trick where they put Vaseline on the screen so then things look like out of focus like I can do that right now if I wanted to and of course like when people used to have their portraits taken and like painted even like way back when like a more flattering image of the people was actually portrayed and if you think that people look sometimes ugly in there just know that that's a elevated version of them so don't don't you worry your pretty little head no one can really handle the reality of what the mirror shows them like so humans have done this for forever but it's kind of been a bit more privileged to be able to do it you know you had to be rich to be able to have a camera you had to be rich to be able to like get your photos retouched or even printed you had to be rich to be able to get a portrait painted for the elite not necessarily for the rest of us the plebs so there's two types of photo retouching today technical retouching which is done to restore or enhance photos adjust colors contrast sharpness and white balance focuses on the background of images and the overall look of an image then there is creative retouching now this is where it's used in fashion and beauty advertisements and it's like an art form so it makes changes to the objects and bodies in photographs so for me personally i kind of feel like technical makes sense like say for example like if you're looking at a photo shoot and then there's i don't know hideous like machinery in the back you want to edit that out. I don't see that to be necessarily a huge problem or like trying to make the background a little bit blurry so then like the subject matter actually stands out. You know what I mean? It's just like stuff like that. When it comes to the creative stuff that's what we kind of have to worry about. And then of course we move on to billboards and advertising. The first billboard was made in 1889. In 1908 the Model T um, was introduced to America so then that meant that driving was a lot more accessible which meant that billboards obviously increased 
and in 1919, Glyco made the first building-spanning billboards. July the 1st, 1941, the first TV air aired in the US. September 2nd, 1955, in the UK, that happened. And August 28th, 1953, for Tokyo. But in the early 1900s, emotional manipulation was starting to be used against women. I showed you in this video up here, like, a few of the historic adverts that we had. It's actually um, really, really gross in the early 1900s. And then of course in the 1990s and 2000s, like people were really starting to like notice just how much retouching was done in advertising on billboards and in magazines and everywhere around us just. And celebrities were standing up against this because their image just kept on being manipulated again and again and again. Um, like there's the famous Faith Hill one, there's a Julia Roberts one, and then there was one where, Oh my god, I forget her name, I can picture the actress, but what she did was she just did a photo shoot with no retouching, no makeup, no nothing, and people were like, are you scared? Are you nervous? And it's like, this is me, so why would I be scared? But we've been trained to be this way for such a long time, is what I'm saying. Like, the whole time we've had pictures, the entire time they've been manipulated. Our minds are automatically just like, okay, this is just the reality there. But when you had like magazines, billboards, advertising like that, you knew that you could close it and like it went away and you could see people around you and whatever and like the pictures that they shared like back when like MySpace was a thing, Bebo, Facebook and whatever, that was just as they were. But then of course all of that changed. That leads me into when did we all have access? So in 1987 Photoshop was actually developed and sold to Adobe in 1988. That obviously heavily being used in magazines, heavily being used in advertising, and a few people were able to use it for like things like wedding photos, like more special occasions, or if you're like really rich, then you'd be using it just because you could. And like the tools on there just got better and better and better. And then of course it became like more widely available to the public, and so then the public were experimenting with it because like prices came down, computer processing went up. And of course, like technology evolves, grows, all that good stuff. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> so Instagram actually launched in 2010. I didn't realize it's a decade old, wow. And it had like really garish filters that was like the selling point of it was the fact that you knew this was an edited picture. So then it had like an Instagram look. You can have like presets made now so you can have custom filters done to have your brand because we are not individuals anymore, we are literally just a brand to be sold. In 2011, Visco was founded, and then it launched officially in 2012. On November 2011, PixArt was founded, and in March 2013, Facetune was invented. All of that happened over a very short period of time, where we suddenly have people having more access to this stuff, so then they can start manipulating their pictures. But it was Facetune that was the one, I think it's like $3.99 or something on the App Store, um, that's the one where people could just just all start being like tweak. And then January 2015, filters and lenses became available on Snapchat. And you can actually also install this uh, when you're filming your videos for YouTube now. And of course there is a Zoom cat, which we know of, because you can actually install this for your Zoom calls, everything. So you've got everything you could possibly need in the date of 2021, except for affordable mental health care, or even health care. Now we're going to talk about how you can tell if an image is photoshopped or not. So of course you'll see things like you won't see any pores, wrinkles will be definitely diffused, you'll have like whiter eyes, and then of course you'll also have white teeth, there's going to be warped edges, and of course very perfect makeup. Now I know that some makeup artists do this as well, like when I say makeup artists I mean like obviously on Instagram they do this, and they like make sure that their images are perfect. Um, I personally have a bit of a problem with that, um, but it's also getting much, much, much harder to actually tell. Um, it doesn't matter uh, because your mind doesn't actually realise that you're being sold a lie, it, it can't tell. So you still recognise that this human is actually looking absolutely flawless, um, it, it's not an advert, it's just a regular human that just looks stunning. It's the thing that we're surrounded by, so it's not even just for celebrities now, not for magazines, it's on everything that you use because anyone can use any of the many apps that are actually available to them and it actually even happens in cameras. I actually just changed my camera over to the G7X um, from Canon, this is the Mark II one and unbeknownst to me until I started looking into um, this video 
you can actually put a face filter on and that's what I've done for this. I normally film on this great hulking like almost old school style camera because it can show you in 4k and of course I do like reviews so I want to show you how it actually is but I've got the face blur on right now so I'll probably be looking a lot better my background will be a bit more blurred and I will honestly just I'll probably watch this and be like oh I want to keep on doing this because I look so good like this that's the thing everyone looks good like this you know if you've seen any of my foundation videos just how bad my skin actually is like how large my pores are how I'm starting to get wrinkles how there's just a whole bunch of things that are just starting to work against me because I'm 31 and I like to make sure that you can see that and see what I'm battling against and see how effective a product is against that but there's this one and there's another camera I forget the name of it right now I didn't actually know this when I bought this camera because I just wanted this to be a vlogging camera that we could take around with us it doesn't do this automatically you have to tell it to do it but the fact that you can tell it to do that and I bought this in what 2017 so we've had this technology for many years now and then there's also more extreme versions of it um, now we know that Tati is notorious for doing this like there are other people that are quite notorious for doing this as well. Personally I do have a bit of a problem with it, I do not agree with people doing this um, at all. <laughs> How it's even possible in video and I can of course make it look better than it is right now. So we should really talk about what exactly are the issues around this because you could say of course like the fact that women wear makeup, the fact that people are put on a pedestal because they have like these great bodies and whatever um, but the thing is that people have been able to actually achieve that through skill or through diet exercise uh, a, a lot of it comes down to genes except for the fact that when it comes to actually manipulating images in the way that we are now so many people potentially developing body dysmorphic BDD which is body dysmorphic disorder um, now of course there are a number of other side effects along with like poor self-esteem um, you'll find that people will not want to actually post images of themselves anymore or they'll just hide away from having photos of themselves taken. It can contribute to eating disorders in children. It's led to an increase in cosmetic surgeries, both invasive and non-invasive. And it can make people feel like they're not worthy, they're not beautiful enough. So basically it's just like, it plays so many tricks on your mind because Biologically, our mind can't really tell because it's like you see a human, you think it's like a regular human face. You, you're surrounded by this and then when you look in the mirror, even if you're one of the people that's actually also doing this, and then you're just like, I don't look like that, and you're constantly coming up against this like, this like dissonance with the fact that you are not the same as them, effectively. So this is also called Snapchat dysmorphia, so people actually take in pictures of themselves in their Snapchat version, like you'll probably know this already, like this has been covered a lot and it's not just young people it's not just women it's not it literally affects all genders all races all ages because I've got people that follow me that are like older than me I've got people that follow me that are younger than me everyone is affected by this whenever I talk about these issues in my Instagram stories if you're not following me check me out here um, you've got these people that are just like I just don't feel like I can post pictures of my work because it's not good enough but then you don't realize the amount of work that goes into actually putting up a makeup picture now I don't do any editing to my ones because I just want to show like my own evolution of like skill or trying to work on that skill but I know that other people do and when it comes to a number of other things people edit all of this stuff and also for me, my body dysmorphia got so bad that I have had plastic surgery done. Now I can talk about that because I'm actually still not even happy <laughs> with the way that I look. My body dysmorphia disorder got to such a point that I was just like, you know what, I was clawing at my flesh, I felt disgusting all the time. If you want, I can tell you my entire story in a separate video, just comment down below if you want me to share that because it's been enough years now since I did all of that that I can talk about it. But I know it's a sensitive topic and this is a video that's not about me, this is about everyone else, oh my gosh. Now, Sasha Polari is the person who actually created the hashtag filter drop and she's done a whole bunch of work of trying to expose the fact that too many filters are being used editing is being done like people literally spend like three hours on one photo and i'm like unless that's your literal job in terms of like putting it into a magazine putting it into like 
something else, not just Instagram. Sasha Polari said it's been an issue she's been passionate about for a long time and she's received messages every single day from women struggling to match the beauty standards in real life that they see online. Like I just mentioned, this isn't just a women's problem. There is one theory about retouching in advertisements that it's done to create an aspirational concept of beauty that inspires women to buy more products. Miller's heard another that the goal of showing the perfect image is to make the women feel bad about themselves therefore making them buy more beauty products. And there was also an incident with Kim Kardashian as well, um, where an image of her was published online which had not had any retouching done and it didn't faze her about that fact. She's apparently, despite us knowing all that we know now about Kim Kardashian, this was a few years ago, um, I have a little cellulite. What curvy girl doesn't? How many people do you think have photoshopped? It happens all the time. I'm proud of my body and my curves and this picture coming out is probably helpful for everyone to see that just because I'm on the cover of a magazine, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. So why is she still using all of this stuff for her Instagram? Why is all of this still happening on all of the social media? Because they choose to continue to use these filters, to continue to use all of this heavy photo editing, like the Facetune, the whatever, well, they pay their teams to do it. So if you're actually really against it, then why is it still happening? I've never been a big fan of the Kardashians and just the fact that they culturally appropriate all the time is something that really, really does bother me. But I know that for other people, you're just constantly seeing these people that have had all of this, not only this work done, not only having the access to the personal trainers, the personal chefs, all of that other stuff, you've got these people that are still using these filters to look even better than what they already do. Already they've got aspirational levels of beauty and then they're elevating it even more by creating a standard that is not at all achievable by anyone. So there is actually a study that shows that even people who use the hashtag no filter, 12% of those people had indeed used a filter. And there's also another study called Picture Perfect, the direct effect of manipulated Instagram photos on body image in adolescent girls. This study was conducted using 144 girls aged 14 to 18 year olds, random exposed to either original or manipulated retouched or like reshaped Instagram selfies. Results showed that exposure to manipulated Instagram photos directly led to lower body image, especially girls with higher social comparison tendencies were negatively affected by exposure to the manipulated photos. It's all bad news. And also the American Medical Association has also condemned the airbrushing of models in advertisements, stating that such images create unrealistic body images, especially amongst children and teenagers. Critics say that many of the models in advertisements, particularly from products such as clothing and beauty ads, are so retouched as to be impossible, such as like the 2009 Ralph Lauren ad, and there's been like adverts that have banned in Great Britain. Now Great Britain has actually, despite all of the flaws of the country, they've actually taken a really, really strong stance when it comes to these things. I think I've fixed my eyes a little bit now. So this research that's been done, it's been conducted on young people again, and I believe it was actually Dove that did this. Dove, as much as I do not like their parent company, they've definitely been part of the movement about like embracing all beauty. So according to the research, one in three girls were unhappy with their personal appearance by the age of 14, compared to one in seven at the age of primary school. And the number of young people with probable mental illness has risen to one in six, up from one in nine in 2017. Boys in the bottom set of primary school have lower self-esteem at 14 than their peers. 63%. Now this is from a, sorry, that was not from Dove. This study is from Dove. This was conducted in 2004. 63% of people strongly agree that society expects women to enhance their physical attractiveness. 45% of women who are more beautiful have greater opportunities in life. 68% of women strongly agree that the media and advertising set an unrealistic standard of beauty that most women can't ever achieve. 76% wish female beauty was portrayed in the media as being made with more than just physical attractiveness. 75% went on to say they wish the media did a better job of portraying women of diverse physical attractiveness including age, shape and size. So the thing here is like, if this is not what people want, we fought against this in advertising, because I still remember it when I was like growing up, I was a kid at the time, 
are there any actual reasons that we could like legitimately edit photos and then that's okay? There are actually a few because you know that I like to always look at both sides of the argument and like to present everything that I can. So it comes down to like people that are like just editing out a zero blemish if it's not an effort. People that are struggling with mental health issues and then they see the image of themselves and they do not feel like they can actually like look at it and feel happy. Um, fixing clothing like wrinkles and stuff. Um, stray hairs that people want to fix scars and body deformities that people feel self-conscious about and then of course like editing out unwanted backgrounds so like there are definitely still reasons to edit pictures um i just kind of wanted to present these because it's like well who am i to tell someone that is struggling again like i mentioned with bdd um if they are struggling with that how can I be like, oh no, like no one's allowed to actually edit a picture and if you do edit a photo, then you have to tell people that you've edited it. Is that okay? Like, is that what we should do? Or should we just start telling people that are like teenagers that aren't, oh, mm -mm, no, you're not allowed to do that anymore? Unless we've got like good role models that have those issues or we actually provide, like, I don't know, what's the word, free healthcare, free mental health. I feel like everyone that could potentially have like a camera phone, I don't know how we can really direct people to be like, mm -mm, you're not allowed to do that now, you know? Everyone has to deal with their mental health in whatever way works best for them. And also there's this argument which I don't really agree with, but I'll I'll read it out anyway, like I said, we try and like listen to all sides. What the brain perceives in a still photo is vastly different from what it perceives in real life, according to Dr. Dale Perves, Director of the Center for Cognitive Neuroscience at Duke University in Durham, NC. New York City. So when like you're seeing like a moving person like what you are now, every second you're getting a series of images of a person that you're kind of blending together and that would be a little bit more forgiving. So what we're taking in, he adds, is a load of stuff including person personality, clothing and smells and elements that can evaporate in two dimensions. The same for the LA Times post in 2009 that some stars do actually get the final say on an image if they're big enough to um, erase distractions. And of course like there's another um, retoucher, Amy Dresser, who reveals the multiple pressures that result in like pictures like Twiggy. Like Twiggy did an advert for Olay, which is always like, love the skin you're in, but then they heavily photoshopped an ad of her. Um, but when it comes to notable people, I feel like embracing the details of that person's face is what I'm supposed to do. Obviously a person wants to have a nice picture of themselves and a photographer doesn't want to look bad. I don't want to look like a lazy retoucher and the magazine wants an appealing image. So you have to find that middle ground. So it's because we've got these expectations from such a long time of us being exposed to all of this stuff because it's literally been around since paintings were a thing and then since photography was a thing you've been able to manipulate things so it's like the magazines of course want to keep on doing that um anything that publishes they want to make sure photos are edited nicely now like i said there's a difference between technical and creative the creative is where it's like it feels like a bit of a lie something that is like a great skincare anti-aging something to do with hair like a makeup product then you should not go editing that person themselves because then that's providing like a false image we do also actually have some laws in place and that are getting put in place around this but most of this revolves around like advertising so for me personally i'm like mm, yeah sure that's advertising so when an influencer is saying like add the start of their like whatever they can't have filtered images on there like there's the truth in advertising act it was proposed in 2014 but it doesn't mean any action would actually happen that just meant like an investigation would happen along with recommendations and i'm like and social media influencers have been told they can no longer use misleading filters on beauty adverts from the UK's Advertising Standards Authority. Sure, that's something, but it's not actually fixing the entire problem though, is it? So for me, it's it's, it's kind of a, a challenging issue because it's like, I can't tell in this because it's so blurred if I've put on way too much blush. And then, of course, we have the issue of where do we draw the line? So is it just celebrities and influencers? And what actually counts as an influencer? Because technically, anyone in your life could be an influencer. Your friend could be an influencer. Your family member could be an influencer. Everyone is technically an influencer to someone else in their life. So it's like, well, are we just 
putting a blanket statement on everyone then, which again goes into like that argument I was given before about people that might be suffering from something and they want to be able to edit something without being like, oh yeah, sorry, I had a huge zit on my chin that I wanted to get rid of, or oh, now I need to talk about my mental health struggles. You know, it's like, are we gonna start demanding things like that of people? Um, does editing lighting or tone of your image matter? Because I personally follow black creators on Instagram and they have to play around with the lighting of their pictures because sadly cameras still don't show up like the tones on their darker skin tones. So it's actually really, really hard to see like the detail, but by playing around with lighting is that editing. So are we actually marginalizing people with this? Because it's obviously like going to work better for white people cameras are. Sorry, was that closing? And like I said, if someone just has a zit, and then what about children? Now this is a separate issue. I am very passionate about not putting children on the internet, not even on Facebook, nothing, because they can't actually consent to that. There's a difference between printing pictures at home for yourself, but when they're online for everyone to see, I've got a big problem with that. But what about people that want to edit pictures of their kids, as in edit them out? Of the photos not doing what kim kardashian did with like giving her like little girl a tummy tuck i'm not on about that i'm on about people that just want to remove their children from the picture for safety does that mean that you have to say it's an edited photo then because then people will automatically speculate that someone's like perfected something they'll do that zoom in thing so that's where i'm like where can we actually draw the line on this because i personally would like to see no photo manipulation happening no creative um, manipulation happening which we talked about before which was changing the way that your skin hair whatever looks your body like making you like it's perfect hourglass we need to actually have this open discussion about exactly what we want and I don't really think that people know what they want yet because all they see is like oh we don't want editing to happen on pictures anymore and because I've been looking into this issue I'm like well it's a lot more nuanced than what we might have originally thought I've tried with my lashes, they'll probably look bad, but I don't know if this filter will even just make them look better, who knows. Like I said, we need to actually decide on exactly what we want. Without that, how are we meant to make the rules, how are we meant to tell people, mm -hmm, this is not right, we don't like this. It's kind of almost a chicken and egg situation, unless we're the ones that are saying, no, we don't want this to actually happen anymore, and by saying that, we are no longer actually doing the editing, we're not doing any of that stuff, and we are all partaking in the hashtag no edit, hashtag no filter, hashtag filter drop. Unless we're actually all doing that, then I don't realistically see it changing. Ultimately, we just need to start practicing what we preach. Now, you know that me on Instagram, I do actually make sure that I don't um, edit my pictures. I'll adjust some of the lighting sometimes if the lighting's bad, and I might like do something with the contrast so that you can actually see something better. But because like, all of my pictures are like taken on my phone, like this, where I've got my script right now, it's taken on here, and this front-facing camera automatically does kind of like what this is doing right now, it automatically does that filter. And so I have to either get super, super up close, like take a picture like this far away, for it to be able to actually show like what my skin really looks like. And even like makeup blending and stuff doesn't show on that. So, and also I do not have the time to do like a full setup every morning when I have to leave the house at quarter to seven. <laughs> so I could uh, uh, potentially even be part of the problem because that's what my phone automatically does. Hopefully when I upgrade it, it won't do that anymore. Another thing to do is to unfollow the people that are actually doing this damaging work. So for example, making sure that you are not following the people that are editing their pictures, that are photoshopping them, like just there's no point, don't give them the attention, the whole point is the fact that we don't want people to be getting attention that are being part of the problem. Hopefully, like, leaving a comment just saying, like, I wish that you would not edit your pictures anymore. But there's a few accounts I follow, and they have their edited photo first, and then they have the unedited photo afterwards. And I'm like, well, why can't you just just get rid of the edited part? Because one, it would be a lot easier for you, because you don't have to spend, like, three hours doing this and just explain why this would be a good thing for people to do. Like, I know that people are just trying to highlight the fact that people do edit pictures, and I'm like, well, why are we all partaking in this when we fought so hard against it to begin with? Like, we can see it's damaging, we know it's damaging, we feel that ourselves. The only people that are benefit are psychiatrists 
and plastic surgeons and of course the beauty companies they're the only ones that are benefiting from these unrealistic standards no one else is we're all just here feeling terrible and that's my biggest concern posting pictures of yourself as you are um, include the flaws, include reality in this digital world that we're like creating. Now I know that this all sounds like, well duh, everyone should do that, but it's actually a lot harder than what people realise because it's very hard to see yourself as your natural form if you're used to not seeing that. And if you're used to putting a filter on, if you're used to like amazing presets, this could be really scary to people and the whole thing is, it shouldn't be scary. We should normalize people looking the way that they are born and they do. I'm not saying that people shouldn't get plastic surgery if they want to, I'm not saying anything like that. And some people say that putting makeup on is a lie. Like, there's a reason that I do my skincare videos and also my foundation videos to show you how bad my skin really is. Like, I try and be as honest as possible and right now, with this filter going on on my camera, I feel like I'm lying to you because this is showing an elevated version of me that you would not normally see. This feels very weird to me. What are your thoughts? Because for me personally, I would want creative editing to go. <laughs> but I also understand it's a very nuanced situation. It's not just like black or white, yes, no, whatever. Same with most things that we talk about here. <laughs> it comes down to the fact that this has been laid out in history for us. We've already been made to feel terrible anyway, like I've talked about in so many of my videos. So it's like, it's not surprising that we've gotten to this point where we're just, you know, tweaking little bits of our digital life. Even if it's like just shaving a few millimeters off your nose, making your waist like maybe four centimeters tighter, it's still manipulating it so then you can't even recognize yourself in the mirror and then it's constantly creating this feeling of like, just this dichotomy of lives, like everything is just a lie because you're lying to yourself as you lie to others. And that's not really a healthy way to live. Now I've been through enough therapy <laughs> in my life to understand like the damaging ramifications of like the world around us. I, I don't want other people to feel bad about themselves because they can't live up to what and their average friends are doing it's like average is not allowed anymore you have to be like really elevated otherwise you don't have a place online and I think that we should be welcoming to everyone so like if you really do want to edit your pictures just question as to why exactly you're doing this like if it's a spot or stray hair or something like that or like your clothing's wrinkled I don't really think it's that big a deal it's when people are going to probably distort their bodies blur out their pores, make themselves just look not like them anymore. Now, like I said, there, there was that retoucher that I mentioned earlier and she is very famous for the fact that she wants to keep some flaws in there. She wants people to still look like people. She just wants them to look a little bit better. Should that be allowed? I don't, I'm, I'm so lost at this. This is why I wanted to have this conversation because when I went into this topic, I have always preached about the fact that you should not edit, you should not filter, you should not do all of these things, but it's like, now that I've seen the reasons as to why people do it, I'm like, mm, maybe we should allow it in some circumstances, but then who's making the rules <laughs> on this? Who's saying this? Because we've got the court of public opinion and that can be really unforgiving and really just this or that. And life isn't always like that like i said there's a lot of nuance into it and so that's why i wanted to have this dialogue with you i will of course see you down in the comments and of course i'll be seeing you on sunday if i've got a video on like a review of products or i'll be seeing you next tuesday for another deep dive thank you so much to everyone again on instagram but like right here all the ones that are helping to inform these videos i'm creating i'm going to be doing another one on ageism and another one on pretty privilege which i'm really looking forward to and um it was also requested in the comments of my last video to do the Madonna Hall complex um, which I am happy to do if you would also like that there are just there are so many topics I want to dive into and so many of them that do actually link in intrinsically with the world of beauty which is where I'm like ugh that's the world I've been residing in for a very long time so this is a perfect overlap what I'm trying to say <laughs> poorly is let me know down below what you think i would love to continue this conversation i can even have part two of this conversation if we get into like that sort of good dialogue i can even make it a live stream for 1000 subscribers which i'm really hoping i do get to hit this year I'm super close to 500 right now i will be so excited when i hit 500 i've been working towards that number for about a year 
So yes, let's hope we can get to a thousand this year. That'd be amazing. Thank you lovelies so much for spending the time here. I really do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, do subscribe as I just pleaded to you very clearly. Give this video a like and a comment and also share with your followers as well or friends, whatever you want to call them. It's weird how I refer to everyone as like a commodity like that, hey. Um, anyway, thank you lovelies. I really, really appreciate your time here. I appreciate any and all dialogue that we have down below and I'll see you lovelies again very, very soon. Bye. Manic, stop eating her. I haven't really made it look like the image that I wanted to start at all, have I? Look at these, by the way, my little Valentine's nails. <laughs>